Hi folks, I'm Dr. Steve Klein. I'm on the faculty of the Department of Communication at the University of Missouri, and I'd like to welcome you to your new class, COM 1200 Public Speaking. In this brief course introduction, there's a few ideas I want to share with you. First of all, I want to talk a little bit about the purpose of the course and the learning objectives. In other words, why are you taking public speaking and what should you expect to get out of it? I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I want to share with you the kinds of assignments you'll be expected to complete in the course and how grades will happen. And finally, I want to touch on some important course policies that you should be familiar with as soon as possible. There are more details on assignments, grading, and course policies in the COM 1200 Student Handbook, in the syllabus that I'll pass out to you, and of course on the course Blackboard where there's lots of information, especially about all of the assignments. So what are we going to be doing in this class? The primary purpose is to help you understand public speaking concepts, principles, and theories. Rhetoric in public speaking is an art and science of public communication that is literally thousands of years old. And the insights that we have all the way from ancient Greece to contemporary communication theory and research give us really important insights into how effective public speaking happens. And you'll have an opportunity to learn about that stuff, which will help you to become more effective public speakers. We're going to talk about the ethical responsibilities of public speaking. In other words, not just how to be effective, but how to do it the right way. Of course, we're going to really emphasize skills for the construction and presentation of effective speeches. You'll have lots of opportunities to get practice speaking in front of other people from a number of different rhetorical goals and purposes and with a number of different approaches and skills that we'll learn along the way. But you're not just going to learn how to speak. You're also going to learn critical skills for listening and being able to evaluate other speeches with uh, constructive feedback. And finally, you're going to learn the important disposition of being able to speak confidently in a variety of different contexts. Now, for lots of people, and you may well be one of them, public speaking can be a kind of a scary thing. You may be familiar with the public opinion research that uh, reveals that most Americans fear public speaking more than they fear death. So according to the old joke, if you're at a funeral, you're better off in the box than delivering the eulogy. But the thing about it is, and we'll talk about this in class, communication apprehension, sometimes known as speech anxiety, is something that you can accommodate. It's not something that you'll necessarily be able to eliminate completely, but you can come to grips with it, and you can actually use that nervous energy to your advantage. When we develop the skills and dispositions for effective public speaking, we're not only going to be able to have greater confidence in being able to communicate and present ourselves in front of other people, but we're also going to be able to develop the critical thinking, uh, research, writing, and interpersonal skills that are necessary in order to be a really effective communicator. So the skill sets that you're going to learn in public speaking are going to translate to other sorts of areas in your academic life as well as your future career. Uh, most employers tell us that effective verbal and written communication skills, as well as effective interpersonal and teamwork skills, uh, the ability to organize ideas, the ability to be adaptive and flexible and think creatively, are among the most sought after attributes for entry level employees in the 2016 workplace. And a public speaking class is going to be able to give you practice in all of those areas. So the way that we describe it in the COM 1200 student handbook is summed up like this. We want our students to develop excellence as both producers and consumers of public speaking. This excellence is defined by three characteristics, ethics, effectiveness, and enjoyment. Students are best served in Communication 1200 by pursuing excellence through an incremental approach, by developing good habits, and by building community in the classroom. Those last three ideas are particularly important. By taking an incremental approach, that means we're going to learn about effective public speaking step by step. You won't be expected to do everything brilliantly in your first speech. We're going to add on, as we go, additional skills, additional ideas and concepts, and then you'll be able to incorporate them in speaking assignments. We'll proceed step by step, bit by bit, until we get to the end of the 15 weeks, and you're going to have a lot of tools in your rhetorical toolbox to use. When we talk about developing good habits, we're talking about being able to go about the process of developing and presenting speeches the right way all the time. 
So for instance, there's going to be some specific requirements connected to your speaking uh, assignments, such as providing research sources and using correct citation style to present that evidence with effective source documentation. Uh, we're going to talk about the need to prepare working written outlines for your speeches before you present them. And we're going to talk about the way in which you need to present your speeches using limited notes in order to most effectively connect with the audience. Some of these habits of practice are not necessarily going to feel natural or comfortable up front, but the more you do them, and the more you do them the right way every time, you develop those good habits of practice that are going to be second nature by the time you become a more experienced public speaker down the road. Finally, building community in the classroom is absolutely important. Because public speaking is something that makes some folks nervous, it's going to be important that we have a safe space in the classroom where everybody is in the same boat, your professor included, after all, I'm going to be doing public speaking in class every day. We'll have an opportunity to support ourselves, uh, to share a sense of goodwill and fellowship as we engage in the shared enterprise. And that's going to make learning and practicing public speaking a lot easier. So speaking of setting up a sense of community, we can start by giving you a chance to get to know me a little bit better. Here's a picture of me as I was attending my first University of Missouri football game earlier in the fall of 2015. My contact information is here and it's also on the course syllabus. I earned my PhD in speech communication at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign in 1999. After I finished my doctoral degree, I worked for three years in the College of Communication at Boston University before I spent the next 15 years back in the Midwest uh, teaching uh, for the Department of Communication Studies at Augustana College, a small liberal arts school in Rock Island, Illinois. While I was there, I taught courses in public speaking and argumentation, as well as courses in political communication, uh, rhetorical theory and criticism, media theory, and communication research. My areas of academic interest, both in teaching and in my research, are in the areas of rhetoric and political communication. As I said previously, people have studied public communication at least as far back as the days of Plato and Aristotle. But what's important about these early lessons is they're still absolutely applicable to 21st century public life. And so we're going to be drawing on that rich tradition as we learn about public speaking. My family includes my wife, Laura, who teaches in the College of Education. She's a science education specialist. And my kids, Allie and Zach. Uh, this is us uh, just off the a flume ride at Worlds of Fun. Wet, but happy. And when I'm not teaching and I'm not thinking about and researching rhetoric and political communication and I'm not hanging out with my family, sometimes you can find me behind a screen. I enjoy RPG or role-playing video games. And I also enjoy running 5K races, although I must admit I'm in the process of trying to get back into shape for my next run after a extended hiatus from my running practice. The holidays can be very painful. Anyway, that's me. And if you want to know more about me, just feel free to ask. And I'm looking forward to getting to know each of you during the next 15 weeks. So what are you actually going to be doing in this class in order to develop your knowledge and skills as a public speaker? Well, there's 825 points in the class. Here's how they break down. You'll have an introduction speech early on, uh, an informal way to get your feet wet for 25 points. Your biggest individual speaking assignments will be an informative speech and a persuasive speech, collectively worth 18% of your grade. For the persuasive speech, there's also going to be a connected written assignment, a brief strategy report, where you think about the specific approaches you can take to persuading your audience. Your final speaking assignment is going to be a group speech at the end of the semester, where you'll work together with a team of four students to organize and present a panel presentation. There'll be a midterm and a final exam. And then class participation accounts for 15% of your grade. And that 125 points is allocated in a variety of different ways. For instance, traditional classroom stuff, asking and answering questions, etc. I'll say more about that in just a moment. I'll also say a bit more about what I'll refer to as the mock or the multiple option quiz, another opportunity for you to participate actively in your learning. There'll be peer and self-critique assignments connected uh, to each of your informative and persuasive speeches. There'll be throughout the semester an opportunity to engage in informal practice public speaking on a variety of occasions. After each of your major public speeches, I'll ask you to work on a public speaking journal. 
And then, apart from the formal class participation points, there'll be two opportunities for five extra credit points uh, when you'll be invited to participate in a research study from Mizzou communication faculty and graduate students. Apart from these opportunities uh, to assist with research, there is no other extra credit opportunity in COM 1200. Uh, that's course-wide policy, not just my policy. Classroom participation involves some things you'd probably expect. Answering questions, asking questions, contributing substantive points in discussion. But what's important to realize about this is that participation in class actively is not necessarily as easy for some people than for other people. Some folks are a bit more naturally introverted and uh, they don't necessarily perceive uh, an active need to participate in class uh, in order to be actively engaged in the learning process. On the other hand though, there are some important advantages to be able to articulate your ideas in public in front of an audience. So if you're a natural introvert, one of the things that I'd like to challenge you to do is to be a little bit more more active in class participation. Now there's a difference between someone who's an introvert, naturally, and someone who is nervous or shy or anxious about participating in the classroom. And that's something else entirely, and it's also something that you can work on. So if you're one of those folks for whom class participation is actually a, a tough thing to do, please don't hesitate to let me know, and uh, we can have a chat in my office. There's actually some specific strategies that you can use to improve your classroom participation, and I'm happy to help you with those. Now, apart from these standard sorts of approaches to classroom participation, uh, individual and small group exercises will be done frequently to reinforce the ideas we're talking about, and I consider making use of office hours a fantastic approach to class participation. My office is in 314 Switzler Hall. That's right across the hall from the classroom, so you can't miss it. My office hours are listed on the syllabus and on Blackboard, and you can use Blackboard to get to MU Connect so that you can make an appointment for yourself online. Those are all of the times that I can guarantee I'm available. Or if you just happen to be in the neighborhood and I don't have a student in my office at the time, please feel free to stop by. That's what office hours are for. Now the multiple option quiz is an approach to reading quizzes that you might not be used to, but I think it's a great way to study. So all of the reading questions that you're going to have for the entire semester are currently available on Blackboard right now. What you'll do when you have to read a chapter for class is take notes and outline as you read. You'll have the questions in front of you, so try to locate and develop answers to the questions based on the things that you locate in the reading. And then when we get to class, a couple of things will happen. First, we'll randomly determine whether or not we'll have a quiz. Some days we'll have a quiz, some days we won't have a quiz. If we are going to have a quiz that day, then we'll randomly determine which of those questions we'll have a quiz on. And then once we do that, you'll have approximately five minutes, with some questions I may give you a little bit more time, uh, to answer that question in a open response uh, short essay. Now, this is a closed book quiz, but it's an open notes quiz. So any notes that you took on your reading, um, any outlines that you made on the chapter, uh, any uh, notes or drafts of possible quiz question answers, all of those are fair game. So the better notes you take while you're reading, the more resources you're going to have at your disposal when you answer those questions. And incidentally, when it comes time to study for that midterm and final exam, if you've done good uh, note taking for your quiz questions every day for class, you're going to have the most amazing study outline. So you're welcome in advance. Uh, we're going to have at least one quiz per week every time we have readings. And the grade for this part of participation will be the top five quiz scores. Occasionally you may end up missing a quiz because you have to miss class, or occasionally you may bomb a quiz because you really didn't do the reading or the note taking the way you were supposed to. It happens to everybody. That's fine. So you'll get graded on your top five scores. We're going to have at least several more than the five quizzes we need. So low scores like that will drop. Now, as I said, for your informative and persuasive speech rounds, you're going to be responsible for some peer and self critiques so that you can learn the process of critical listening and then evaluation and constructive feedback. So the forms are available in the student handbook, perforated pages and everything. You're going to have a total of four peer critiques. Uh, you're going to listen and evaluate two peers' speeches for each round, informative and persuasive. Uh, they'll be assigned in advance on the blackboard, and during the speeches, you'll listen, take notes on the forms, and complete them, and turn them in at the end of class. 
What you really need to do is not just check the appropriate boxes, but include constructive written feedback, because this is one of the best ways that you can learn uh, effective public speaking, is to get immediate feedback from people and giving you concrete suggestions. And so you'll have an opportunity to help out your classmates in this way. After each of these speeches as well, you're going to be responsible for a self-critique, so you'll write two of these. Each of your informative and persuasive speeches will be video recorded, and so you'll want to make sure that you have a flash drive with you on speech day. Uh, when you leave, then you'll be able to use your video and use the grading rubric for the speeches, all of which is available on Blackboard, to evaluate yourself. And again, you'll want to make sure that you provide concrete, constructive details. This is really your opportunity to really think deeply about the speaking experience and to evaluate yourself objectively from the standpoint of an audience member. You'll turn in these critiques at the end of the next class period. As I mentioned, besides the formal speeches that you'll be getting grades on, there'll be a number of individual speaking opportunities that'll be worth participation points, but they're really lower stakes, uh, informal, and more fun, just to get us some safe practice. So there'll be a today's tune assignment, so one day during the semester you'll introduce what your favorite song is, or uh, a song that you like, or something that's really meaningful to you. Uh, you'll present the song to us, and, by YouTube video or audio, you don't have to sing, um, and then give us a speech of no more than a minute uh, explaining what that song means to you and what it might mean for us. You'll have a couple of opportunities during the semester to deliver an impromptu speech. In other words, a short speech uh, for which you will have a limited amount of preparation. Five minutes to prepare, one minute to speak. This is going to be a really helpful skill set when you get out into the working world or advanced study and you need to do a presentation on the fly. And later on in the semester, you'll have an opportunity to propose a toast uh, to learn some of the skills and concepts involved in speaking at special occasions. After each of your major speaking opportunities, what I want you to do is actually do some reflection on it on, in the COM1200 public speaking journal. The journal is available on Blackboard. It's reading that just you and I will read. It's not something that's going to be available to the entire class. The evening after each major speech assignment, I want you to reflect and write at least one substantive paragraph where you really think about how your preparation went, how you think the speech went. Um, this is going to be something that then you can incorporate into your self-critique for the informative and persuasive speeches. But this will also give you an opportunity to do that kind of reflection before those self-critique assignments as well as afterward. And again, as I mentioned, uh, there is actually research to suggest that if you can take your thoughts, think about them, and then articulate them in written form through something like a journal, it actually gives you a deeper learning experience uh, because you're able to get a better grasp on it than if you don't write it. So this is a good opportunity to develop that kind of articulate reflection. And each of these journals will be four points each, and you'll do this five times for the major speaking assignments. Finally, I want to touch a bit on some important policies for COM1200. Required materials, attendance, late work, and academic integrity. In order to succeed in the course, you're going to need to get a couple of things from the Mizzou store or elsewhere. Uh, the third edition of Speak Up, an illustrated guide to public speaking, as well as the Communication 1200 Public Speaking Student Handbook. Both of these are essential and we'll use them every day. Uh, in particular, you're going to want to make sure you've got the Speak Up text to prepare for your quiz questions. And you're going to want to have the student handbook with you every day because it's got everything in there from detailed descriptions of course assignments to the forms that we need for peer and self critiques, uh, information on course policies and all kinds of good stuff. In addition to that, you'll need a flash drive of at least two gigabytes uh, for the video recordings for your informative and persuasive speeches. And you'll want to invest in some index cards. You'll need these not only to prepare your speaking notes for your speeches, but you'll also want to have some handy in class if we ever need to do uh, an impromptu speaking assignment or another kind of exercise. Four by six index cards are really a good choice for public speaking. Most index cards people get most of the time are three by five cards, and they're great for a lot of purposes. But when you're standing up in front of a lot of people and you need to handle your notes easily and be able to read notes that are written in large print very easily, uh, three by five cards, and even worse than that, I've seen people deliver speeches with little slips of paper. Uh, it's a nightmare. They're tough to read and they're tough to handle. Four by six cards are really comfortable to use, so I suggest giving them a try. 
Attendance is very important. The following is a course-wide COM 1200 policy, not a Dr. Klein policy. There are no excused absences in COM 1200. Um, none. Now, that doesn't mean that you'll be penalized necessarily if you have to miss class because you're sick or because of a family emergency. These kinds of things happen, and I totally understand that, and so does the COM 1200 staff. Here's how it works. Four absences are allotted to you that to use for any reason. Um, you can, of course, use them for the occasional mental health day if you need one. We all need one from time to time. Um, but you really would want to save these for things like days in which you're sick or days in which you might know that you have a job interview uh, or days in which um, something unexpected might happen like a family emergency. The one exception to this rule is uh, activities that are formally sanctioned by the university, including sports, but including other kinds of activities as well that are co-curricular and sponsored by the university. If these kinds of things apply to you, let me know in advance, and uh, these kinds of absences can be expressly excused. Now, if you get five absences over the course of the semester, your course grade will be reduced by one letter grade. And if you accrue nine absences over the course of the semester, which, if you think about it, is the equivalent of two entire weeks of the course, your course grade will be reduced by two letters. Uh, we really need to have good class attendance, not just for speaking days where speakers need audiences for feedback, but also for the active learning uh, and the uh, exercises and discussions we're going to have in class. So you need to take attendance seriously. Assignments that are missed during atten uh, missed attendance can't be made up, uh, so that's another incentive. Late work as well is something that can be really problematic in a public speaking class. Uh, my policy is that late work is not accepted except for emergency circumstances, and uh, they only count as emergency circumstances if they've been cleared by me. So I know that emergency things happen, and so uh, that's something that I can be flexible about, but you need to communicate about these things with me. Uh, in a public speaking class, if your assignments fall behind, you can get seriously jammed up, and it makes it difficult for you to prepare for the next speaking assignment. Just so you know, um, what does not fall under the category of an emergency for late work is I had a technical problem with my computer. Uh, we live in an age now where you can save your work in multiple places, on flash drives, uh, on the cloud drive, uh, in your email or in your university server, and it's a good practice anyway, a good habit to have, to save your in-progress work frequently so you don't lose it if you do have a computer glitch. And there are a lot of computers on campus as well. So uh, it's just not a valid excuse that I... I did all of my work and I didn't hit save once and then all of a sudden when I was ready to complete it, my computer magically fried. Um, that's not going to fly. Sometimes it happens and I understand that. That's why you want to make sure that you back up your work throughout. Um, and that's not just to succeed in COM 1200, but in life. Academic integrity, finally, is something that's really important in this class. All written work needs to be submitted both in hard copy as well as electronically on Blackboard via the Smart Assign link. This gives you an opportunity to double check and make sure that the work that you're submitting doesn't take liberties with verbatim unattributed citations from other sources. Uh, it's also a policy of the course that you'll document your research work using the citation style of the American Psychological Association, or APA. That's the standard citation style for communication studies. If your assignment is found to be plagiarized, the minimum response is a zero grade on that assignment. Depending on the nature of the violation, it could also involve uh, a phone call to the provost's office for further sanctions, which could include failing the course or things even more heinous. If you have any questions about what might constitute a violation of academic integrity, like plagiarism, there's a guide that's provided for you in my syllabus, as well as a one-page cheat sheet for APA citation style, uh, and a document that reinforces what the key policies are. And if you ever have any concerns or questions about how to do source citation or how to avoid plagiarism, please let me know. Uh, sometimes uh, cases of plagiarism boil down to, I just wasn't sure how to do it. And these are questions that can easily be answered. All you have to do is ask. And I'm happy to help you out. 
your experience in a public speaking class can be really transformative if you put in the work and you open yourself up to the experience. You can start out at the beginning nervous as heck and fearing the enterprise and come out at the other end of the 15 weeks feeling a lot more secure and comfortable about the prospect of public speaking. It's something that's an important skill, not just for a future college classes, but for your career. And this is a really good opportunity to nail down some of those skills, learn some important concepts, and more importantly, help each other out in a collaborative, constructive environment where everybody is learning and helping each other learn together. If you have any questions at all about the course, you'd like to talk about assignments or any other matters, please don't hesitate to give me a call, shoot me an email, uh, chat with me in the office. All right, let's have a great semester. I look forward to getting to know you and hearing your speeches.